Welcome back, Tiger Tailgaters, wherever you may be. Russ Castle along with Jane Roblo and, of course, Mary Beth Curry. Mark hey. Hanson is here with us. How you hey, doing? Hey, 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 hey. Take a look at this. The University of real? Georgia cheerleaders are, you real? are here. Are they Memorex? <laughs> is, this, is this the real gang? Well, listen, I tell you what. We, we're we glad that... Let, let's give a big Tiger welcome to the Georgia yeah. cheerleaders. We're, we can be hospitable now. We can be nice to their cheerleader. Let me, let me ask y'all something. Were, were any of y'all cheerleaders last year? Or were you really? That's interesting. <laughs> you, oh, you were... Oh, yeah, okay, all right, yeah. Well, I, I, I tell you what. I'm going to dedicate this just especially for you because who will ever forget what it was like? We, we talked with David Treadwell, and we asked him to relive as we remember that magic moment in, a moment in Athens one year ago. The sonar as a whole. Magic moment in a moment in Athens one year ago. The sonar as a whole. Treadwell awaiting the snap. The spot. The kick is up. The kick is down. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, unfortunately, I did miss the field goal, and uh, Georgia got the ball and went down the field, and they were driving pretty good. And, Defense caused a fumble and held them. Great job. Offense took the ball right down the field. And I was like, oh, just give me one more chance, one more chance, as I was pacing down the sidelines. And I got that one more chance, and I took advantage of it. I remember you and I talked last year, and, and you made the comment. It was almost like everything was in slow motion there. You know, the snap, the kick, and then it seemed like it would never make it to the goalpost. Definitely. I, I remember that as you bring that back up. It did seem like things were in slow motion. The snap just seemed like it was never going to get to the holder. And then as I approached the ball, I felt bring that back up. It did seem like things were in slow motion. The snap just seemed like it was never going to get to the holder. And then as I approached the ball, I felt real slow, but everything just went real smooth. And when I hit it, I looked up. Shonard already said it was good. And then I looked up, but I just wanted to make sure it went <laughs> Is that the ultimate as far as your career is concerned? Will that one always be in the uppermost memory? Well, it definitely has to be the highlight of my athletic career, no doubt about it. But each field goal, I, I like making every field goal I can. That one just happened to be right there at the end. What has happened since then, David? Uh, some of the things that people have said to you over the year, I, I know we, we replay that play all the time on the radio. I guess we'll play it for the next hundred years. But uh, any comments that, that you remember that are outstanding over the last year? Oh, I got a lot of comments. Most of them were pretty good. Even Georgia people were going, you know, I'm, I go to Georgia. I'm a Georgia fan, but I was still rooting for you because I knew you. And that makes me feel real good. And people are behind me. And some people even forget. They go, remember that Treadwell kid? He's kicking for Clemson. Makes me feel real good. And people are behind me. And some people even forget. They go, remember that Treadwell kid? He's kicking for Clemson now. He never did anything in high school but play soccer. So, you know, that was a lot of fun. This is a big game, definitely. And, the adrenaline's flowing, and we're getting fired up as far as the team goes. And basically do the same things, game by game. But the kicking game is going to be a big part, and it needs to be perfect. Good luck to you. Thank you very much. Okay, David Treadwell from Jacksonville, Florida, which is one of our favorite places. And David, of course, with a big kick last year, he says he'll never forget that. That's one he'll tell his grandkids about. That's the one we'll tell our grandkids about. You got that right. And David, of course, one of the leaders in the country right now, has six field goals in two games. And he is third in Clemson history in kick scoring and second in total field goals. Unfortunately, his point after touchdowns pretty came oh. to an end last week, but it was awfully wet up there in Blacksburg, yeah. and uh, David got his uh, next streak started very, That's very exactly well, and right. let's hope he continues that here today. We're here on the Tiger Tailgate Show as the rain continues to fall live from the lawn at Little's uh, next streak started very, That's very exactly well, right. and let's hope he continues that here today. We're here on the Tiger Tailgate Show as the rain continues to fall live from the lawn at Little John. I really wanted to go in the game. The drive will begin at their own 42. Tigers ran 10 plays for 53 yards. And they had no timeouts uh, left in the game. So just a few seconds to go in the contest. It was uh, just on time. And David Treadwell was brought on for the race here. We'll do an effort of 22 the kick, the kick is good! So once again, the second uh, year in a row, David Treadwell uh, brought on to attempt the game winner. 
And uh, he came through once again. Uh, he is now 7 for 7 in field goal attempts when he has attempted inside the last eight minutes of a game. Jim, I reflect now on some of those unique statistics that you come up with every week. Kick off. Inside the last eight minutes of a game. Jim, I reflect now on some of those unique statistics that you come up with every week. Kick off. 13 plays. And with 8.44 left in the first quarter, the Tigers hold on their own four-yard line. Steve Crumley comes in for a 21-yard field goal attempt. 8.47 remains in the first period as we await the snap, the spot, and the kick up. The kick is good. Georgia 3, Clemson nothing. On the very next series, Georgia stops Clemson with an interception, but Clemson holds, forces the Bulldogs to punt, taking over on their own 27-yard line. 13 plays and 61 yards later, it's David Treadwell's turn from 30 yards out. The hash mark right at the 20-yard line. Bailey gets it down, Treadwell gets it up, and the kick is good. Clemson 3, Georgia 3. The first quarter ends that way in the second quarter. Clemson in possession after holding the dogs. Forced to punt to Georgia's Nate. Georgia 3, the first quarter ends that way in the second quarter. Clemson in possession after holding the dogs. Forced to punt to Georgia's Nate Lewis. Georgia with an eight-man front. Snap that. Sile gets the kick out of there, and he hits a good one. And uh, Lady Porter is Lewis. Picks it off at his 24, comes up over 25 to 30, gets away to the 35 to 40. Down the sidelines he goes, gets a block. He's at the 40 of the Tigers. He's going to go. He's going to go for a touchdown. A 76-yard touchdown run on the part of Nathaniel Lewis of the Georgia Bulldogs. The PAT, PAT is good. Georgia 10, Clemson 3. Next series, and the Tigers waste no time. A couple of quick plays, and then... Tracy Johnson, Terry Allen, the Ibacks. Rodney up under center now has Cooper wide to the left side. This time he's giving it off to Johnson. He finds a big ball. He's at the 20. He's at the 15, the 10. Wide to the left side. This time he's giving it off to Johnson. He finds a big ball. He's at the 20. He's at the 15, the 10, the 5. Touchdown! A 59 yard drive climaxed by Johnson's 30 yard three yard run and Treadwell's point after. Clemson 10, Georgia 10. Georgia threatens on the next series with the Tigers hold on their own 25. Steve Crumley comes in for a 41 yard field goal attempt, misses to the right. The Tigers ball, first and 10 on their own 25. An exchange of punts. Georgia gets a, a, a bad one, and it's only nine yards. Clemson takes over on the Georgia 34. The Tigers can't move it, so with 2.34 left in the half. And now, Treadwell is going to attempt a field goal of some 44 yards from the hash mark left. Spry will snap, Bailey will spot it, and Treadwell will be set to looter here. We await the snap. There's Betty will spot it. And Treadwell will be set to looter here. We await the snap. There's the spot. The kick is up. The kick has the distance. The kick is good. I'm from 13, Georgia 10. But with less than 20 seconds left in the half, Georgia gets to the Clemson 11, and it's time for Steve Crumley again. They're trying to tie it here, the spot and the kick. And the kick is a floater that gets through there. It is good. Eight seconds remaining in the half. Nobody owns the advantage. It's tied 13 all. And that's the way the half ended. The Tigers received the kickoff as the second half began. They started on their own 20. Were suffered, uh, suffered a few penalties, but Rodney Williams converted on a third and 11. However, on the next play, Georgia recovers a McFadden fumble on the Clemson 37. The Tigers hold. Georgia brings in Steve Crumley, a fake field goal. It doesn't fool the Tigers. They get the ball back again on their 37. The Tigers hold. Georgia brings in Steve Crumley, a fake field goal. It doesn't fool the Tigers. They get the ball back again on their 38. On the punt, Nate Lewis fumbles a fair catch. The Tigers get the ball on the Georgia 7. Eight minutes left in the third quarter. On third and goal, Williams stumbles and goes down. So, with less than seven minutes left, Danny Ford calls on David Treadwell again. Awaiting the snap, the spot, the kick is up. It was good. Was it deflected at the line of scrimmage? Looked awful weird to me. It was. Looks like Miles Smith, number two, deflected it, but it still went over. A 29-yarder makes it Clemson 16, Georgia 13. The quarter ends with the Tigers in possession on their own 48. 
They get into Georgia territory in the beginning of the fourth quarter, but a 43-yard field goal attempt by Treadwell is no good, and Clemson, after using up all its times out, fails to get points on the board. Georgia in possession. Jackson links up with Warner to take the ball to the Tiger 22. Two runs out, fails to get points on the board. Georgia in possession. Jackson links up with Warner to take the ball to the Tiger 22. Two runs by Tate to the Clemson 8. Then Jackson takes out, pitches to Hampton, going to the left side. He's got some room. Now he's going to run. He's good free at the 5, and it's going to go in for a touchdown. A 74-yard drive. The PAT, PAT is good. It's Georgia 20, Clemson 16. Clemson can't move the ball. Siles' punt is down on the Georgia one-foot line. And the Tiger defense rose to the occasion. Wide right comes Thomas. Double tight ends, high formation. Jackson this time rolling to his left. He's in the end zone. And Watts got him. And the wrestling ball for safety. Georgia 20, Clemson 18. Gene Beasley, the man who actually made the stop. On the series following the free kick from Georgia, two great runs by Terry Allen puts the ball on the Georgia 13. Then two power runs by McFadden. The ball is on the Georgia Eight-yard line, the clock is ticking, ball on the Georgia 13, then two power runs by McFadden. The ball is on the Georgia eight-yard line, the clock is ticking down, two seconds to go, David Treadwell. It will be an effort of 22 yards. The spot, the kick, the kick is good! Clemson 21, Georgia 22 seconds left, and that, of course, was the ball game. The first time in over 80 years, the Tigers own back-to-back -back wins over Georgia. And the second time in a row that David Treadwell has kicked the game winner. Unbelievable to think back to uh, a certain Saturday afternoon in Death Valley. Yes. Shall we, shall we relive it one Let's more time? Let's relive it one time. Here we go. It will be an effort of 22 yards. I love this. Stop. The kick, the kick is good! Good! Yeah. <laughs> For the second year in a row. Boy, I tell you what, that was... Good! good. Yeah. <laughs> For the second year in a row. Boy, I tell you what, that was something else. I, here's what I got for you. I got a couple of tickets for you to come. Football game. Off it comes to our, or McFadden. He gets a first down in at the Georgia 44-yard line. If he can just break loose from Rusty Beasley's grasp, he's done. First and 10 Tigers at the 44 of the Dogs. Four minutes and 38 seconds remaining in this football game. Georgia by two. Rodney Williams up under seven. Brings Hooper in motion for the right side. Gives it off to his tailback. Allen finds running room. Gets outside at the 35 and down to the 33-yard line. Got it just inside the 30. And it is third down for the Tigers. Rodney has been set. And picks it out. Pitches to Allen. Allen looking for running room. He's got the first down. He's losing the 20 to 15. And he's all the way down to the 13-yard line. He's the running room. He's got the first down. He's losing the 20 to 15, and he's all the way down to the 13 yard line. Clock continues to run. This may be that is the most important field goal he's kicked last year's was. Ten seconds. It will be an effort of 22 yards. The stop, the kick, the kick is good. And the Tigers come from behind with the two seconds left. And they win over the Bulldogs here at Clemson's Death Valley this afternoon. Excitement is what this game is all about. And the Tigers certainly made it exciting here this afternoon in a number of ways. But you can chalk it up for history. Clemson 21, Georgia 20. <laughs> Not available in many. But you can chalk it up for history. Clemson 21, Georgia 20. <laughs> Not available in many. Hard work. Well, it's our donkey. Catchment problems. Hooking. The kicks. But he got pissed off. And all kinds of this is. Kick in time. And that put the Tigers up three to nothing. On their first possession, the Gamecocks lined up in the run and shoot their offense of the previous two seasons. Coach Joe Morrison says there were a number of reasons for doing that. Kind of want to spread them out. Uh, thought it helped Harold, you know, as far as the running game was concerned, the traps up the middle. And I think that worked pretty good. And I thought we'd get tied on the move, get him out of the pocket a little bit, and uh, 
getting out there and throwing the ball where they just couldn't tee off or tie that, tie that, tie that. Rumors that the Gamecocks might use the running shoot had been flying around prior to the game, and Danny Ford expected they might try something different. He doesn't feel the change caused his defense any particular problems. It's tough uh, to, to change your offense in a week, and uh, change caused his defense any particular problems. It's tough uh, to, to change your offense in a week, and uh, maybe uh, maybe that helped us more than it uh, helped them because. Uh, they ran very well against us when they were running the football. I thought, uh, I thought, you know, Green ran awful hard against us in there. The Gamecocks did look good on their first drive, but Todd Ellis pass to Robert Brooks picked up 23 yards, and the Gamecocks eventually reached the Tiger 9. Then disaster struck. The voice of the Gamecocks, Bob Fulton, has that call. In motion right comes Platinum, but three men out on the right side. They give the ball to Green, and he stops at the Tiger 9. Gamecock quarterback Todd Ellis says that turnover set the tone for his team. We really wanted to score on the first try just because we felt like it would be something that would shock them. They wouldn't, they wouldn't expect us to come out. We really wanted to score on the first try just because we felt like it would be something that would shock them. They wouldn't, they wouldn't expect us to come out in it. Uh, the, four, uh, the four receivers in a lot of motion. Uh, and uh, we moved the ball down there. When that guy stripped the ball away from Harold, it really, really hurt us. And uh, things were really moving there. And we knew we wanted to really jump on him early in the game because it was going to be a game of field position. And uh, that's what it turned out to be. The Tigers took advantage of that mistake to strike, strike for another field goal. The big play in the drive was this first down pass from the Tiger 48. Just Davis to the right, Gary Cooper to the left. Again, they'll be in the high formation with McFadden and Allen behind Rodney Williams, the quarterback. But the Tigers couldn't take it into the end zone, and Gardaki was true from 31 yards out, giving the Tigers a 6 0 lead at the end of the first quarter. Again, Gardaki was true from 31 yards out, giving the Tigers a 6 0 lead at the end of the first quarter. The Gamecocks again came down the field with a strong drive on their next possession, only to be stung by another fumble. Back to throw, Ellis has pressure, and he's going to be hit on the 32-yard line by the bandit end, Jesse Hodger. Fumbles the ball, and Benson has recovered.
I knew um so I, I had the outside on um all day on on the left on that guy who was playing number nine, I think. I'm not sure. And um coach just called my number and I was you know, I was hoping for it and I just put him inside and then I went outside and beat him beat. Brooks' touchdown reception made the score 16-7 Clemson, and that's how the game stood at halftime. The story of Eden Dick. Brooks' touchdown reception made the score 16-7 Clemson, and that's how the game stood at halftime. The story in the second half for South Carolina was field position. It was rotten for the Gamecocks. Their first four possessions all began inside their own 14. Ellis says that did a lot to negate the momentum they had going into halftime. It really did, uh, and you got to give them all the credit for that. They're part of their excellent job. Uh, Seemed like when we were fighting to get this yardage, we did a good job. We chop a few away and then get the big penalty. Uh, you know, they called that flip on uh, on uh, Carl Platt, and it, it wasn't. He pulled off right there before the end. But you know, that's something that the referee angle is it's tough to see. And you know, plays like that, when you get a big one and they chuck us back with the penalty, seemed to kill us in the third quarter. Plus the field position, they did an excellent job. The Tigers took advantage of the poor field position by scoring one third quarter touchdown. After forcing a punt from the Gamecock 15, the Tigers had to drive only 44 yards. Allen had the big play from the Gamecock 22. Team, the Tigers had to drive only 44 yards. Allen had the big play from the Gamecock 22. Williams at quarterback once more for the Tigers. Up under center, digs it out, pitches back to Allen. Terry reverses his field. Now it's up to the middle. 20, 15, down to the 10, the 5, and what's the wild out of bounds at the 2 yard line? That set up a one-yard dive by Tracy Johnson for the touchdown and a 22-7 lead after the extra point was missed. It was apparent now the Tiger offense knew how to block the Gamecock defense. Johnson says they were just better prepared this year. We were able to uh, get down the blocking assignments on, on the uh, defense that they run, and we were able to pick up the blitzes, and uh, we were able to block better, so I think that accounts for uh, the better uh, performance today. The teams exchanged punts into the fourth early part of the fourth quarter, but then the Clemson defense came up with its first theft of Ellis as senior safety Rusty Sharpie picked him off at the Gamecock 33. Then the Clemson defense came up with its first theft of Ellis as senior safety Rusty Sharpie picked him off at the Gamecock 33. What we were in, we were in man coverage, except for myself. I'm playing kind of third field. Anybody that needs help, uh, I try to help not anybody gets overrun. And it just so happened that, that um, somebody broke loose underneath uh, a flank ready. He looked up at 10, 11 yards. That's not it, Donnell. He looked up at 10, 11 yards uh, right in the center of the field. And uh, I think I never, I don't think he ever saw me. I think uh, I think it was Jesse Hatcher from what I heard later. I knew somebody was pressuring him, but somebody really got you know hitting good and forced him to throw the ball probably before he really wanted to. And I happened to break right in front of it, and you know that's what I was there for in case somebody got outran and it worked out okay. Now it was time for senior quarterback Rodney Williams to shine. This is a third and two play from the Gamecocks 34. Now two plays later from the Gamecock 7. Second down and 10. Robert Williams hit that on the team touchdown! <laughs> Just a regular option play. We have been running it. Uh, we're working both sides, and we decided to run to the weak side. Then I came down, faced to Tracy, the defensive end, uh, the defensive tackle took Tracy, the defensive end took Terry, and our tackle did a great job blocking the inside backer and, and make that save for me, and I got into the end zone. That would be the last play in Death Valley of Rodney Williams' career. The next time Clemson got the ball, he came off the field to a standing ovation knowing he had turned in one of his best performances ever. I knew I had to have a great game to be successful for Clemson University to be his best performances ever. I knew I had to have a great game to be successful for Clemson University to be successful against South Carolina. And, you know, as I said earlier in the week, if I don't play good, then, then we have a, a great chance of losing. So uh, I knew I had to play well to for us to win, and, and I was fortunate enough to play a good game. The Gamecocks added a Colin Mackey 47-yard field goal with just under five minutes left to make it 29-10. to 10. That's the way it ended, though the Tigers had the ball at the Gamecock 3 when time expired. 
Afterwards, Danny Ford accepted his team's invitation to meet Oklahoma in the Citrus Bowl. Fast football team is very excited. We had a, probably the best trip of our entire lives at the uh, Citrus Bowl last year. Uh, got a lot of IPSA money down there, and I'm going to get some more when I'm down there. Yeah, I think we're going to get some IPSA members, but our fans and our, our, our university and, and, and probably the most important people that I know of, our football team just appreciate the opportunity to come back down there and look. Oh, most important people that I know of. Our football team just appreciate the opportunity to come back down there and look forward so much to playing anybody we got to play. In the visitors' locker room, Jim Morrison was accepting a bid to face Indiana in the Liberty Bowl. He made no apologies for his team. Uh, we knew it was going to be a tough ball game coming in. We had folks that uh, had a lot of bumps and bruises, and they were playing hurt, and we knew that. And uh, we had to play some folks out of position, but uh, I thought they gave a good account of themselves, and they showed a great deal of heart out there. Clemson had an excellent football team. We knew that coming in. We knew they were strong defensively. We knew they were strong uh, offensively. And, uh, you know, we got to touch down right before the half. I thought that was going to give us a little bit of momentum coming back out in the second half. And uh, I don't know where the field position averaged uh, the third quarter, but we really didn't have very good field position. And, uh, ended up our defense was on the field a long time, and they just kind of wore us down there towards the end of the ball game. So the war is over for another year. This they just kind of wore us down there towards the end of the ball game. So the war is over for another year. This time the Tigers won, and their fans will have the bragging rights until next November. By when Saturday's game will all but be forgotten, and the two sides will clash again at Williams Drive Stadium. So now it's time for all the fans to get behind both teams as they head off to test themselves against quality bowl opponents. We'll have more CarQuest Sports Talk coming up right after this. Clemson, a winner in four straight here in Maine. They're headed to Omaha next. We'll be back. 